video games are a favorite scapegoat among those who wish to pretend complex problems have simple, easy solutions. Video games have been blamed for obesity, short attention spans, poor social development, poor educational development, the destruction of the modern family itself, and violent behavior, which is our topic of the day. Video games have been blamed for violence ever since they allowed you to press a button and commit an act of violence in a virtual world. Maybe that's jumping on an anthropomorphized mushroom, or maybe it's raising a character above your head and shocking them until they explode. No one denies that video games have allowed players to commit sometimes crazy over-the-top violence through the games, but there are some who persist that violence in-game creates violent behavior in the real world. But the truth is, there is little evidence that video games make people behave violently in real life, and absolutely none that video games make murderers. In fact, the evidence points to the contrary. Let's get some of the facts of the way before I explain why. A USA Today article discussing President Trump's recent statement blaming violent media for the Parkland, Florida shooting says yes. Some studies have said video games can teach players violence. However, many researchers, such as Villanova University psychologist and researcher Patrick Markey, say, All we can really say for sure is that there does not appear to be a link at this time between violent video games and school shootings. And if there is a link, it goes in the opposite direction. The article goes on to say, School shooters are actually less likely to be interested in violent video games than their peers. In fact, only about 20% of school shooters play video games, compared with about 70% of high school students overall. And, school shooters as a group tend to do things that aren't typical of their peers. Typical teenage behaviors include playing video games, many of them violent. It's just a sign of a healthy childhood to do things that our peers do, even if parents don't like it. The article even says that a rise in video games, even violent ones, has been seen in correlation with a fall in crime, especially violent crime. Another study written by Glenn Jay of the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences in Webster University, Thailand, notes that, Interestingly, the Netherlands and South Korea, two nations that consume more video games per capita than the US, also experience far less violent crime than their American counterparts. The article also mentioned the study carried out by Christopher Ferguson and Cheryl Olson at the prompting of President Obama, this finding a rise in video games to correlate with a fall in violent crime. Ferguson also says, It has been increasingly recognized that much of the early research on violent video games linking them to increased aggression was problematic. Most studies used outcome measures that had nothing to do with real-life aggression and failed to control carefully for other important variables, such as family violence and mental health issues. Glenn goes on to mention they found that modern video games are incredibly socially oriented largely thanks to the growth of online gaming environments, and that many of these games improve problem-solving skills and nurture creativity. Possibly most telling is the fact that attempts to bring higher regulation on video games, especially violent games, has met virtually no success. In 2011, the Supreme Court of the United States gave video games the same protection as literature, art, and film. In Brown vs. Entertainment Merchants Association, they said, Psychological studies purporting to show a connection between exposure to violent video games and harmful effects on children do not prove that such exposure causes minors to act aggressively. Any demonstrated effects are both small and indistinguishable from effects produced by other media. But this ruling also came after a number of similar rulings in multiple states, as pointed out by Ben Kuchera of Polygon. Time after time, increased regulation of video games has been struck down. U.S. law by and large seems to believe that video games do not create violence, and the science seems to prove it. All this research indicates that it's pretty normal for kids to play violent video games. Don't believe my research? I'll provide links below. And feel free to do your own research. You will find the same evidence I did. So let's think about this. If you consider video games and violence on the absolute most basic level possible, the theory that video games can create violence makes sense. A game often consists of a lot of repetition of various actions, and many of this would include violent actions. A large portion of video games, these violent actions are required to advance and eventually beat the game. So even if they are not rewarded some manner of points, the video game is rewarding these violent acts. Therefore, video games create a system of repetitive, violent acts that are rewarded. The reward system is a psychological practice that is so heavily ingrained within society that it is often a joke. 
The problem with this idea is that while it might seem to make sense, introducing reality completely breaks down the system. You see, there's a reason we rarely take someone seriously when they say something like, I'm going to kill them. It's because killing someone isn't an easy act. In a Time article talking about a study by psychologist Pascal Mullenbergs of Monash University, author Jeffrey Kluger says, Evil isn't easy. Say what you will about history's monsters, they had to overcome a lot of powerful neural wiring to commit the crimes they did. The human brain is coded for compassion, for guilt, for a kind of empathic pain that causes the person inflicting harm to feel a degree of suffering that is, in many ways, as intense as what the victim is experiencing. Even those that take a life in self-defense are not necessarily exempt from psychological scars. Though action might be decisive and quick in the moment, the act of killing someone can leave someone feeling emotionally distant or even like they've lost some of their humanity. Killing goes against human nature to be social, being, by definition, the most antisocial thing one can do. While video games might feature violent acts, they do not affect empathy, according to a study in Frontiers in Psychology, finding no differences between the study's gamers and non-gamers. The link to an article discussing the study is below. As with all these studies, I encourage you to read it. The research is interesting. Let me end with some personal experiences. As a lifelong player of video games, some particularly violent, I have some insight to the argument that games can create violence. You see, I've done some things in video games that surprised some of those around me. I remember one particular instance where I posted a video demonstrating that unconscious soldiers can, in fact, be drowned in a puddle if placed face down in Metal Gear Solid 5. I didn't really think anything of it, but some were a little shocked. Mostly amused, though. You see, I'm a pretty mild-mannered guy. I get along well with people, and I'm about the last person who would be driven to violence. My violent tendencies in video games have never transferred over to real life, nor have video games prepared me in any way to actually engage in violence. The first time I held a gun was a humbling experience. I, a legal adult having played hundreds of hours of video games involving firearms, watched dozens of movies where guns were used, and had a decent collection of airsoft guns modeled after their real-world counterparts, felt not only the significant weight of the weapon, but the strong sense of consequence contained within that piece of metal. My marksmanship was certainly not improved by my years of virtual experience, especially with the rifles. I don't think I actually hit anything with them. Despite a huge amount of time handling firearms in video games, some in VR, I feel no more trained to handle a gun than someone who's been given a five minute lesson on how guns work, and I certainly do not feel prepared to turn a gun on a living person. The last experience I want to talk about is that of seeing real violence. Years ago when people were again trying to blame video games for desensitizing people to violence, Jim Sterling put out a video to argue against this. In the video he showed, giving plenty of warning ahead of time, footage of a politician shooting himself in the head at a live press conference. Deciding I wanted to fully understand his point, I went ahead and watched. Having seen the footage, I can definitely say my reaction was not in any way dulled by the large amount of fake death and violence I've seen in video games. Unlike in a movie or video game, there wasn't really any gore or blood, but it was horrifying to see someone die. It made me feel sick and left me troubled for a long while afterwards. This, merely having seen it, and having zero connection to the man or the event itself. I've never felt particularly uncomfortable with violence in video games, because I know it's fake. But with real violence, that's not the case at all. And that's why blaming video games for violence is a fruitless and foolish endeavor. Video games are no longer something only a few people play. Worldwide, there are millions of gamers who live absolutely normal lives. Lives that are often enriched by video games. The science does not back up the claim that video games turn people into violent killing machines. Sure, some problems can manifest themselves around the playing of video games, but we need to stop taking the easy and intellectually dishonest option of blaming the video games themselves. Mm -hmm.